Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to have a brief look at the beta for Ubuntu 24.10. And my first reactions is, stop recommending Ubuntu to people. My God. Uh, this is just um, not has been the best experience. Now, we are rec uh, recording this on real hardware. So I'm using my SSD, one terabyte SSD that I have for testing distributions. We are on a Ryzen 5 1600. In fact, if I remember correctly, I believe I should be able to find uh, system information down here. Maybe. There we are. So uh, we are on a Ryzen 5 1600. Yeah, it was a brilliant system when I built it years ago. Maybe it's time for an upgrade, but you know. Uh, so you can see uh, what we have here. We're running on a one terabyte SSD. I believe this is the uh, Western Digital Blue um, M2 SSD or NVMe, actually. So this is it is working snappy and uh, quickly, which is what I would anticipate on a machine like this on this. And so what I actually want to do is OMG Ubuntu has a big feature release information. I kind of want to walk through portions of that and give a little bit of commentary about uh, truth and not truth and things. First and foremost, let me tell you this, I had to log out and log in under X because guess what? Screen recording still does not work under Wayland. Stop forcing this on everybody. Now, I didn't even download Simple Screen Recorder, which I know doesn't work. I went with Blue Recorder, which indicates itself as being Wayland ready and I went to run my first test video of it and I get nothing but a blank screen switch back under X and yes now I can go ahead and get in here now they did say the installer was exactly the same as 2404 I'm not 100% sure that's the case I did install 2404 as well and I do not remember seeing accessibility screen by default. What that was is under the settings and under accessibility, you have a number of different items that you can choose and turn on on Fez accessibility options. Yeah, Linux does lag behind on accessibility according to some of the emails that I've received. However, on the installation, I was actually presented with a window to enable various accessibility options. They said that everything was the same as before, although I do not remember that in the past. I might be wrong, and maybe it did present you accessibility options on the installer uh, when you uh, did 2404. I don't remember that. And so the accessibility options was new, and I thought that that was a great and a brilliant thing. What did not work for me on the installer is installing the, uh, the full suite, so... On the installer, you can choose between a minimal install, which, by the way, does not even have a video player or a music player on a minimal install. It has nothing but basic system tools. And uh, I had to install one to test if my recording video was working. But when I went to install the full, which is what I wanted to install, the installer kept crashing out. I don't know if that's a bug or an error. Again, we are not in a virtualization. We are on real hardware. I booted it under EFI. So everything is perfectly fine. The only thing that might be a little bit different is I did boot it off of a Ventoy disk. I didn't burn an installation disk. However, the regular, the, the minimal install worked out fine. <clears throat> All right. So that is my installation experience. The install, uh, as I had indicated before, was getting a little bit worse. It did take a long time to install. Linux Mint installs on spinning rust on like 15 minutes. Why does it take Ubuntu over an hour? Even installing software using the new software tool, I had to install a couple pieces of software. One of those is the blue recorder that I'm using to record this video right now. You can see it's running over here. It actually took me 15 minutes just to install this. I simply come over here, search for, actually what I did is search for screen recorders to see what my options were. I generally do simple screen recorder, but that does not work under Wayland. And I wanted to record this all under Wayland. I'm sure there might be something in here that works. And I did an ex experiment looking at a variety of screen recorders under Wayland on Linux Mint. And I did actually find a few that worked. And I couldn't remember exactly which one worked the best. Uh, but, uh, what I end up going with is simple screen or, uh, excuse me, blue recorder. And I believe I went with the snap package version of, which I don't even see it showing up here. Uh, but 
I find it. I remember using it before. I remember it working pretty well. Click the button and it literally took 15 minutes to install because that's the downside of installing the snap packages. Now it only took about five minutes for, um, I went to install celluloid, which did not work under the Debian version, but it did work under the snap version. So I went ahead and installed that. Let me go ahead and do a snap list just to kind of show you what we got here. So, um, <clears throat> expand this out so we can actually see so blue recorder you can see that was a snap celluloid i installed that as a snap that allowed me to preview my video make sure my video recording settings are working um, i had to install that again the debian package is what i wanted to install that failed to install because um, uh, it's still calling for uh, youtube dlp which of course is i'm not sure if that's the i think that is the package that's working right now apparently it wasn't working it could not install the application so i went with the snap version instead so you can see everything else here uh, which is a snap version of the system and so I think that that's a lot of what is in here. Now, a lot of the changes that they're talking about mostly are related to the GNOME 47. There are a lot of changes in GNOME 47, uh, which is good. And um, it is definitely uh, an improvement over some, some past things. Uh, perhaps there's a few things that may not be. Of course, one of the things that they indicated as a change is under your appearance that uh, Ubuntu has had the ability to select your basic um, uh, highlight color for a while. It did actually have that for a little bit. However, this now goes back and backports to the one that they have just recently input into GNOME. So if you remember, GNOME 47 added the ability to do accents inside of GNOME. Ubuntu dropped what they were doing independently and went back to this one, which would make uh, all the GTK apps work quite a bit better. I didn't notice this wallpaper before. I want to see that one. Let's see that. Ooh, it's beautiful. That's Monument Valley in Utah. I like it. Uh, obviously not a picture, obviously a, a cartoony picture, but I like it. Let's keep that one for the rest of our duration here. So that's one of the changes here. This will actually have a little bit more cohesive unity inside of your entire desktop theme, which is really good. So I can't fault them for any of that. As far as some of the other changes that I believe came with GNOME, and one of the things that they promoted as a feature, it ends up uh, being a bug. Um, I'm going to highlight this one in case there's any Ubuntu developers. F new file manager features. So the this is, of course, the new files manager, uh, which is part of GNOME 47. So I think this might be a GNOME issue or maybe how Ubuntu is doing it. What I want you to notice here is the, uh, the folders down here. You see this other locations tab. This other locations tab pulls up other items. It pulls up embedded drives and things like that. And uh, what they're doing is they said, hey, in the new feature here, we don't have to go with that other tabs. They just pin themselves automatically. Well, until they don't, and then you don't have the ability to do anything. See, what you can still do under this is this is actually the hard drive, and then there's these other two hard drives attached to the system. So what I can do here is I can go back and I can click in on the drive, and then I can navigate through everything on the drive not just what's inside of the home folder. There are times you have a reason to do this. And yes, I know you can do this through a terminal, uh, obviously, but there's way, there's reasons to do that in the GUI to look for your, maybe you're looking for an icon folder location. You're looking to see where something is. There's reasons to be able to see what's in here. And the bug that I'm experiencing is I can only navigate inside my home folder in the GUI. So this is actually the new file manager in reality. What you'll notice here is that I do not have the other and I do not have the other volumes. I cannot in any way get down into any of those other folders. Let's see if I can do, um, let me see if I can actually, can I edit location? Um, Okay, there you go. Okay, I can do that. I can click into there and I can backdrop down and that'll get me down into the system route. But there's no tools to get to it. Now, what they're saying is hard drives will automatically be mounted. That seems to not be the case. And uh, if you notice, if I pull up my disks, you'll notice this is the drive we're on. 
But I have a full hard drive in here. This is actually a Linux Mint Debian edition I've been testing out on Spinning Rust. It's here, and it works. I just booted into the system. Guess what? That system sees this drive, but for whatever reason, Ubuntu cannot see that drive. I don't have the option to mount it. I don't have the option to view it. I don't have the option to explore it. And the other locations tab is no longer there. So there seems to be something fundamentally wrong with the file manager that is preventing me from seeing those other drives. Fortunately, I can't can get back into the whole system if I need to by going up to the top and typing slash. The average person doesn't know that you can do that. So there certainly is an issue. We do have some uh, bookmarking capabilities inside of the sidebars now. Uh, let's see, we're going to skip the disk usage analyzer, new and expanded settings. There's a, lo a number of new things inside of your accessibilities. Uh, activating the window on hovers now in accessibilities, things like that. Uh, the other things, online accounts. Let's have a brief look at that. Uh, there are some changes here. So we have Microsoft for email, and we have the Microsoft 365 for email, calendars, and contacts. So that is actually uh, a new feature. I think that comes with GNOME 47, uh, in all honesty. But you see that we do have full Microsoft account, which gives us emails. We have a Microsoft Exchange server, email calendars and contacts on an Exchange setting. We have the Microsoft 365, which is probably more geared towards your home user to access your files, contacts, calendars, email. Uh, we have the next cloud, and then we have the other options as well. So there are a lot of really great options inside of here. That is new uh, new features in this version of Ubuntu. Uh, they did talk a little bit about the dock changes. When you are upgrading software, it will give you a status indicator as to how well the update is proceeding. That's actually a really good feature. In fact, let's go ahead and have a brief look at this again. If I go down under managing your updates, this is, um, you can't, there's a separate update 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 manager separately but you can also update everything inside of this so here is the various things that are asking to be updated and then here's other updates available we're not going to push updates right now because um, you know I don't need to wait another six years to push updates on the system I mean installing this one snap took forever and then, uh, let's see, that was the App Center. Um, of course, in the App Center, the default for anything is going to be Snap, searching for Snap packages. So if you do a ser search for this, but you do have the pull down here to see what is down here in the Debian packages as well. So you do have that option. I do really like their new uh, software manager. It is really good. It is definitely an improvement over the old GNOME system. Uh, there's a few just different minor things, uh, 20th anniversary editions. The other thing is the security app. So the new security center, this is the one we, we looked at it a couple times. It's still experimental, uh, but it, it's uh, this is going to be they're building this out in future builds. It's going to have a lot more data coming online soon. So what this is going to do is if in the event of an app needs access to system files, you can grant this on a one by one basis. You'll notice it is tagged as experimental. You will have to enter your password when you turn it on. And when you enable this then any apps which have the ability to save things to the system is now going to have the ability to save. So, for example, uh, your home folder, let's see, you can manage your permissions. There's no rules set yet, so it looks like there's not a lot we can do with it yet. What this is going to do is if you're, for example, downloading a file with uh, Firefox here, and you want to save it somewhere, it's going to give you the um, the box to verify that you're going to save it. It's basically a way to uh, permission sandbox your uh, things a little bit better. So that is actually, it's still experimental. I think they're putting it in now so more people get used to it. Maybe more people will turn it on, get more data back. This is very common for Ubuntu to do in these uh, mid-range um, releases. Of course, the LTSs are the even 04 numbers. 2404 was an LTS. This one is 2410, the first cycle that they start experimenting with new features to make sure that things are working. And then there's just some basic things. NVIDIA is going to default to Wayland, uh, so they have that figured out. Fingerprint support, and then just a few other um, tools as well. 
Uh, we do have the new apt installed as well. Let's have a brief look at that. Uh, we featured this uh, in the past. Let's do a sudo apt update. Um, and so when you're doing this, what they're doing is they're basically doing a lot more color coding to make it easier to understand what is going on. I believe they think that's what they're going to be doing. Let's do upgrade. Okay, so yeah, so you can see that um, the packages which are upgrading are going to be in green. Anything there, here's installing extra dependencies, so we're getting more information there. We have a better summary. If there's a package that's going to be removed, it will show itself up in a red. So it gives you a lot better idea of what is going on when you run a system update. We're not going to run the update, but that is the new apt feature that we've been looking forward to coming on down the road. Uh, Linux kernel 6.11, let's just verify that again. Let's do a uname-r, so 6.11.08 generic, so that's cool. Uh, if you are on a laptop, there is more power accessibilities. Uh, we are not on a laptop here, so um, if you go over here, it's boring. I just have my balance and my power saver. If this were a laptop, you'd have some more options about what to do on battery modes and things like that. You can tell, uh, see here that it does give us... Um, information on the keyboard and the mouse batteries as well. I always like that. That's a new feature that's uh, sometimes annoying and sometimes works well. <laughs> I know my uh, MX Linux will warn me about that, and it warns me about a month in advance every time I touch the mouse. <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs> Don't need to change that battery quite yet, but, you know. Um, and then uh, you can kind of see that uh, there's, uh, there's just mostly the changes are involved inside of... Uh, inside of your gnome 47 now my deepest frustrations were the installer it did not allow me to install what i wanted to hopefully that's just a bug in the beta and that gets resolved um obviously i had to switch back to x in order to do uh screen recording so if you're booting this up if you're a new user i always analyze these in perspectives of the new user a new user comes in and wants to do a screen recorder and they go into the app store and they search for a screen recorder and they install something and if it doesn't work they don't know the problem is Wayland versus X the average user doesn't even know how to boot into the system into X instead and so it raises a couple of concerns and questions that we have about uh, the forcing of Wayland on everything when applications say it's ready for Wayland but it's really not and that's the experience I have with blue recorder uh, additionally, the time it took to install, it took a long time to get that application to install. Uh, on the minimal here, uh, you'd think on a minimal desktop, you'd have at least something lightweight to do videos or music. You don't have any of that. Let me just go ahead and run down the software that's pre-installed uh, by default. Now, I added Celluloid because I needed to test to make sure that my video things were working properly. We have a firmware updater and the additional drivers. You can really see there's a couple system tools, disk usage analyzers, and things like that. But there is really nothing else installed on the system other than a web browser. Now, that is good in the effect that, hey, I did ask for minimal install, but hey, we got a calculator. We got language support. We got system monitors. We got a bunch of other things. So you can make an argument for installing something like Celluloid, which is a super light video and uh, audio player, just so when you have a video file and you double click it, it actually plays rather than being like, hey, there's no application for this. Uh, even on the minimal install, that might be a good thing. Uh, so I did find this was a more frustrating distribution from a first user's perspective than something like a Linux Mint. But it's not absolutely horrible. I mean, I've certainly seen worse distros. But overall, I'd probably steer clear if you're talking to a new user about using um, using Linux. Definitely steer you more towards an MX or a Linux Mint or uh, Zorin uh, rather than Ubuntu, which is kind of becoming its own thing and its own ecosystem, which doesn't necessarily lend itself to the same user friendliness that many other Linux distributions are having. So there's my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down below. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.